everyone. This is uh, Wilson Cole, president of Adams, Evans & Ross, Backdoor Hire Solutions, and ELOC Global Partners, and I'm joined by uh, Samantha Cole, my lovely daughter, and our general counsel. How are you doing, Samantha? Doing well. Can't complain. How are you? Doing fine. Doing fine. You know, uh, there's something that I want to talk about in this particular session, and I know we've touched on it in the past, uh, but that's just on backdoor hires, how clients don't realize that they're owed when, when a, uh, when a uh, debtor tells them that they find somebody that's worked or they say, gee, we don't owe you for this backdoor or for this placement because we already knew the candidate. And, and that is a specific reason, you know, three or four years ago, I wrote the top nine excuses of, of uh, backdoor hires is to give everyone kind of a, a framework. You know, there was a, a client of ours I was talking to that one of their recruiters uh, came to him and said, you know, they told me that, you know, somebody presented them eight months ago. And so now, uh, you know, even though we presented them, we set up the job interview and all of that, they're not wanting to pay us. From a collection standpoint, I can tell you, we're gonna collect 80% of the time. From a legal standpoint, I'm assuming that we're wanting to know if there's a signed contract, what do they need to have in those contracts to help with, even without a contract, I feel like we can get it collected. But from a legal standpoint, what are the things that they need to have in that contract to protect them with back for hires? I mean, really just make sure you have a possessory period that's consistent in your contract. I've seen where they have the possessory period in there multiple times and it not match. So if you have inconsistencies in your contract, then it becomes much more problematic because the contract can be deemed invalid. Okay. Or you've got one that, you know, one clause protects you 110% and the other clause makes it where they don't owe you a fee. Well, so just the consistency through that. And then again, it's not as much the contract. If you've got a solid contract, when they come back and say, hey, there was another recruiter, we're not going to pay you, shut up. <laughs> yes. And that's a good point. Get us involved. Get your attorney involved. Because anything that you say right now, we're dealing with one that our client set up the interview, our client set up all of everything, even got a thank you note from the, uh, from the uh, uh, candidate. They're not wanting to pay because of one email. Our client's recruiter said, well, you know, if he was presented before, then you don't know what's the fit. And our argument is she didn't have all the facts and it's still the procuring cause argument, but she has complicated that by trying to smooth the client. Will we get it collected? I don't know. And, you know, we'll if it have to, is legal, it, it's, it's 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 very area. difficult. It's very gray area. So I think you touch on something uh, perfectly uh, that, that, that's ideal is, on a backdoor hire, if they say, well, we're not going to pay you because, it doesn't matter what that because is. Seesaw communication, whether you get us involved, your attorney involved, uh, you need to go ahead and escalate it. But also understand, uh, you know, I was talking with an associate that was talking to one of the recruiters, and the recruiter says, well, you just don't understand the real world. We're never going to be able to get that collected. And I'm always shocked at the recruiters that don't think that they're owed a fee. You know, I think, you know, Hireable, which we acquired their client list when they, um, and, and fulfilled all of the contracts for them when, when they closed down, uh, John Guidi and I uh, once did a webinar called the billion dollar, uh, this was actually even before we had developed our software four years ago, five years ago, uh, but did a uh, webinar, the billion dollar issue that recruiters don't think they have. Everybody knows that backdoor hires happen, but they don't recognize it when it happens to them. And, uh, you know, the thing is, let's assume on that situation that we were discussing earlier, let's assume that they did have another recruiter that presented that candidate eight months ago. The basic fact is both candidates 
may both or both both uh, recruiting companies may be owed for that same candidate because that company has a fiduciary duty to track that candidate and inform, they should have informed our client within 24 hours on some type of name clearing. Sam, how do they handle the, the from a name clearing standpoint, just where if that's not abused? I, I know I always ask our clients, well, ask them, hey, have you pre been yeah. presented here, here, and here? What is there anything that, that they can put in there? I know some name clearing provisions. No, something along the lines of within 72 hours, you have to provide um documentation that the candidate is actively involved in the hiring process okay because the thing i hate to see is name clearing of well turns out john smith worked with jane doe at company xyz so we're not going to need your help in this recruiting yeah that's not name clearing that's just them going yeah. back and saying hey did you oh yeah i know john he's a great guy fine we'll, we'll kick the uh recruiter out of the, the, uh, yes. the loop. And so having it where it's very specific that you have to show that the candidate was already in the hiring process. No, I agree. You know, the, the one thing that I'll do, I, I am such a firm believer that we need to solve the problem of recruiters not knowing that they're owed a fee. Uh, one thing that we'll do, and if you go to our website at backdoorhires.com, you can click order the free book. Our book is 100% free. Uh, I'm not going to charge you for the book. I think we're going to charge like six or seven bucks for the shipping, which covers the postage and, and, and getting it out to you. But we're going to give you the book for free. The neat thing about that book is it has the top nine excuses, but it also has two case studies per excuse on how we handled and got it resolved. You can accomplish the same thing, but understand that you, you don't want to try to appease the client and say stuff if you're, not, if you're not sure of how to handle it. But the biggest thing is understand that legal argument. But if you'd like the, um, a copy of that free book, go to our website at uh, www.backdoorhires.com, click free book. And, um, and pay the $7 or $6.95, whatever it is, shipping, and we'll get you out a copy. Um, Sam, on any closing arguments on, you know, suggestions to recruiters on this subject? I think just make sure your possessory period's solid, and if you're going to have a name-clearing provision, make it clear and not have it open-ended. Yep, because you, you don't get, you don't get, and that's something, and before, because that's, I'm going to pick that up. What Samantha is saying in plain English, some of our clients say, well, I don't put 12 months or 24 months or whatever, because I, I think I've got a better argument. You have screwed yourself if that is your argument, because you don't get ownership of that client or that candidate perpetually for the rest of their lives. You have to have an end date. Industry standard is 12 months. You could probably get away with 24 months, what we always say, and I know that's outside the industry. Uh, well, we're not even saying that gets that gets further because a lot of courts are using a um, a non compete the same time periods as okay. they would to rule on a non compete, and twenty four months pushes it to the envelope. The the best yeah. way to handle that is twelve months from the last discussion or presentation. That way, once you stop talking about that candidate, that's where that date sets versus when you first presented them. So you can, in essence, stretch it out to 18 to 24 months, even with a 12-month possessory period, if you have in there from last discussion or presentation. Yep. Okay. Sam, thanks for joining me. Guys, uh, order our book if you want to go through the top nine excuses. Uh, I think you'll recognize a few. And if you're unsure if it's a backdoor hire or not, don't respond to the candidate. Or don't respond back to the client. Call me. Tell me the situation. And we'll discuss. And I can let you know if, if there's an issue or, or not or if it's, if it's collectible. Nine times out of ten, the biggest issue that we've had with backdoor hires and we've handled thousands of them, is for the clients to realize that they're actually owed a fee. So let me know if we can help. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.